Oh, I love that name. <laughs> that is a great handle. What's up, Joe Just Out? Assuming you are from Atlanta. Rhythm is here. Mickey Fit is here. Bruiser Gogo -Go is here. Hey, everybody. Tutu Delta is here. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Autumn Lee. Hey, Autumn Leafer. <laughs> Somebody said you fine. Girl, it's the lipstick. <laughs> it is the lipstick. So, um, thank you for coming to Beer Biz and BS. Um, tonight we are talking about movement. My lighting is really not amazing. I don't know what to do about that at this late hour, but uh, we're just going to go with it. Um, <laughs> Uh, tonight, we're talking about movement. The theme of the, the, the show tonight is movement. I thought that that would be a really important topic to talk about because um, because of uh, the pandemic. And we have really changed the way that we um, move in our everyday life. We are a lot more sedentary. We're just living a different lifestyle. And so I know I have been trying to um, incorporate more movement into my life. Um, and I thought it would be a great topic to talk about. And it just so happens that two of the people who we are speaking with tonight um, are both movers and shakers in their respective industries. Um, they are two ladies who I am excited to, to introduce to you all. Um, and as you know, because it's Women's History Month, I am talking with all women all month to every Thursday night. So I'm packing in the goodness, packing in some great um, discussions, and I really hope y'all get something from it. So the way this works is at 7.05, I'll bring up the first guest. That's Elisa from Rhythm Brewing Company, um, also known as Lady Lager. And then we'll chat for about 20 minutes, and then I'll bring up Mickey Fit um, at about 7.25, about 20 minute halves that we have here. Um, and then I will um, I'll wrap it up. Um, so we start at 7.05. In the meantime, I'm going to get my beer together. Y'all let me know what you're drinking. Chanel says she loves my haircut. I got it cut, y'all. It was a hot ass mess. Y'all saw me. I was packing the size down to try to make it look like a shape. Horrible. Horrible. So yeah, I got a lot cut off the sides in the back. Um, nothing really cut off the top. Maybe a little bit cut off the top, but, um, it just, it feels better too. I'm waving at folks. I'm going to get my beer. It's right behind me. I'm drinking um, 18th Street Brewing's Temporal Purgatory. And it is a, uh, it's an IPA of some sort. I'm not sure if it's a double, triple, or whatever. It's a Session Pale Ale. Excuse me. Got that all wrong. But um, here's the beer. Y'all let me know. Drop in the comments what you are drinking tonight. This is um, a black-owned brewery from Indianapolis. I was in Indiana recently. May be able to tell you all about that a little later, IDK. But I was there, um, my homegirl, my fam, my craft beer fam, Mickey Bryant, um, also known as Black and Brew Chicago, told me to go and grab beers by 18th Street Ale. I didn't have a chance to go um, to the brewery, but I went to Total Wine. Y'all know Total Wine always has the local beer. So I went there and grabbed a mixed six of all of, uh, six beers I could find from, Indianapolis and um or Indiana proper whatever that area <laughs> and uh and packed it in my in my in my luggage I didn't plan to go out of town well that's not true I planned to go out of town I didn't plan to go shopping out of town so I had a hard time I had to send my coat back with my sister so I could pack some beer away so it's a really really pretty color too golden I see some people are drinking rhythm unfiltered lager yeah that's the red can Kimmy KJ1, what's up, sis? That's my sis. Our family is in the building. Also from Connecticut. So this is perfect. I'm so glad you could be here. Let me know what you're drinking in the comments. Um, it's at 7.04 right now. We'll go ahead and pull up the first guest, who is Elisa from Rhythm Brewing Company. You may know her as Lady. Um, I have known her only by craft. Um, sorry, only through craft beer and on social media, to be honest with you. We've never met in person, but I've gotten some of her beer, and here she is. Y'all, I was just hey, telling hey. everybody, say hey to the people, girlfriend. What's up? How you doing? I am great. What's up? Nothing much. Cheers. So, cheers. Cheers to you. Which beer are you drinking? That's the first question. We need to know, because you are a brewer, and you can drink your own shit, and that's I'm drinking my own. Listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm drinking today 
after yes. the amazing day that I had today, I said, you know what? I looked at my beer fridge, which by the way, I have amazing beer from around the the, the country. I'm sure I you do. Got, oh, I, my gracious. But you know what? I needed just, I said, let me just do something light. So I'm actually, I'm sipping on my Rhythm Blue. Yeah. And then uh, let me, let's keep it real. I'm trying, you know, the calories, you know, the, I'm trying to, the, the weather was good yeah. here today. So I'm feeling a little springtime, summertime coming. So I'm like, I gotta, you know, let me do the blue. It's less calories and all that good stuff. So well, cheers. that's what I'm drinking. Cheers. To you. Cheers to this conversation. Cheers. A lot of women are in the building. I see so many folks who I just want to say, hey, to be crap, we're kind of sore. There's a go-go. Miss Kay Brown, Penelope Potts is here. Grant, a.k.a. 1908. Absolutely. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. I just We've got jump. the best family. Listen, I mean, the, we, everybody you just named, I mean, yeah. we are so blessed. We because really we really are. We it's a sisterhood, um, but we're all moving in the, the same direction and the collaborations and the conversations are so incredible. You ladies keep me going. So um yeah, shout out to every I mean Absolutely. it's amazing. They the are crew. They, it's a it's a rich crew and I wanna shout out some folks in Atlanta. I saw a party of two brew crew on, um, just had a two year anniversary. And this was the first time I think a lot of us came out this last Saturday um, at a at a, a pop up sort of outdoor, very safe bottle share event that he had. And it was so nice to see everybody. And like you said, our community is so big. It's growing. It's genuine. It's organically growing. Oh, and yeah. I, just, I think it's so awesome. So um, it is. I am excited to have you here because the topic tonight is movement. And I'm going to flip it a few different ways because I have so many questions to ask you. Um, people, <laughs> people know you as Lady Logger. They know you as the CEO of the first uh, Black-owned, first woman-owned brewery, both, like a double yes. down, double jeopardy double. situation. Check, yes. check. <laughs> in the state, not just in your city, mm -mm, but in the, in the state of Connecticut. I yeah, mean, girl. What an accomplishment. Y'all put some some hand claps in the comments for <laughs> that because that is a serious, serious accomplishment. And I just want you to tell the folks um, how you came to create your brewery, the inspiration behind it. I've heard it and it is one of the best stories, I think. Um, so let's start there. Tell people who you are and how you founded why and how you founded Rhythm Brewing Company. Absolutely, Jen. Um, it's, but we, the story begins in the 1970s. So we got to go back to the 70s, okay? Let's go back. Let's go back to the 70s, the good old <laughs> days. Uh, 70s is like one of my favorite eras, by the way, the music, all of, look, everything, the wardrobe. Everything. But my, in the 70s, uh, I would watch, um, I would sit and listen to music, and my grandmothers were, were sipping on these, the cutest little bottles of beer, Okay, mm -hmm. and they were sipping. But they were sipping on what I found out to be later were um, little ponies of Miller High Life. Yep. But they were dainty because my <laughs> grandmothers were very classy, very elegant, and so they had these little p ponies of Miller yeah. in this little bottle. And I was always, as a kid, I'm like, I want, I want, I want. And back then, you know, you the DCF would knock on your door if you gave like a kid, you know, a little sip of, you know, yeah, some no. beer. Nobody, nobody was like, you know, getting arrested. DCF wasn't mm, knocking on the door. Not at all. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so my palate at at a young, not a young young age, but when I grew when I grew older to actually enjoy beers uh, with my grandmothers um, or just sipping on them, um, that the palate was was lagers, yeah. and so. Let's fast forward. When I first started the mission, I knew I was going to make a lager. And more importantly, I knew that I was going to be able to tell my grandmother's stories, stories that as black women, they were not able to tell mm. back in the 70s. Yes. So with their paying homage to them and their spirit kind of flows through me every single day when I get up on this journey, oh, uh, I Jen, I will tell you, yeah, that. And I always say it's bigger than me in a can of beer because it really is. We have to tell the stories of how we got there, where we're mm -hmm. going. And that's how you empower and inspire. And yep. so I'm just, 
Um, I mean, my grandmothers, I, I know they're shining down and they're like, look at you. You made your own beer. We told you, it's, you know, it's like, but it, it, it fast forward. It's like, if we're going to consume something, we should really have ownership. Uh, yes. And it, it gives us more power. It gives us more uh, of a voice. And so that's how the rhythm brand um I knew I was doing loggers. So mm -hmm. that's how the rhythm brand really uh, kind of morphed into this, uh, you know, the, the branding of it. Um, what the movement part, we didn't even get to that yet. That's the fun part. Why I did know. I name the company Rhythm? Yes. But, you know, but it really, it started in the 70s with my, with my grandmothers. And God rest their souls. I just love them. I hope I'm making them proud. And, uh, you know, we, we have stories to tell. We know that you're making them proud. And let me just say, my very first beer was the exact same beer. Oh. It, was high, it was high life. And it was because my father drank it religiously every day after work. And he always let me take the first sip off of the, the top. You know, it, he drank the tall boys. Remember the tall skinny ones? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The long in, necks. In, in the Absolutely. Eight, the long necks in the 80s. Uh -huh. that's, when they, that's when they classed it up a bit. And my, <laughs> my dad used exactly. to drink those every day. And he let me take the first sip. And it was just the foam on top of it. But I, I love that story because I think a lot of us who are craft beer lovers have a very early you know, entry point into craft beer. Yeah. Like you said, defects weren't checking for nobody back then. So no, uh -uh. it's all good. <laughs> Absolutely. Let me tell you something. Um, it's funny. And I don't even know if I've ever shared this, but um, I have a picture with me on the potty. Okay. Of course the beer, it was, there was nothing in the, in the glass, but I literally, I thought I was grown probably back then at my age and I'm just, in, you know, in a pamper, but I'm just like, I've got a bottle, a beer bottle literally turned up. <laughs> and so I knew I was destined to become a brewer yes. back at a, a year or so, because um, that was my cute, happy place. And I thought I was growing because grandmas, you know, drank these bottles of whatever yeah. they were drinking. And so... Yeah, but I, of course I can't put that on a can. I'll, you know, that we can't do that these days. Yeah. But it's cute. But I, but it was it was uh, destiny. It was it was it was it. A, it was bound to happen. So every time I look at that picture, I go, "Yep, that's exactly what I." Um, it, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah, absolutely. It was like it was <laughs> destined to be. Destined to be. So totally. to the naming of your company, rhythm. This is like mm -hmm. the other side of you, maybe that people may or may not know. If they follow you, they might. But a lot of people don't know um about the naming of your company and i want yes. to i want to hone in on that just for a hot second tell folks how you Absolutely. arrived at the name of rhythm it's, brewing so i am a professional salsa dancer and when i say professional i mean for 20 years i've been teaching class Love i've been it. backup dancing i i go yes. i would go on okay, tours back up what it, <laughs> oh yeah oh let me tell you I, okay, so go, I would go to Puerto Rico and I would walk into these places. I would walk into the El San, San Juan and it looked like something out of a movie. And I'm like, I am not coming back to Puerto Rico unless I know, unless I know how to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. What they were doing was salsa. And so yeah. me not just knowing not how to just do something. I went in, I took a couple of lessons. The instructor was like, oh my gosh, I was addicted immediately. 20 is years. a natural. You were a natural. Nat it was natural. I mean, you know, dance school, you know, three years old, tap, yeah. jazz, ballet, all that good stuff. Everybody but uh, did Jenna, that. Yeah. yeah, everybody did a little point <laughs> shoes and tutus. Um, but when I really, honestly, I was in Puerto Rico on business and I, I, I was like, this is just amazing. Again, it looked like something out of a movie. Came home, took a couple of salsa lessons and ended up opening up Elisa's House of Salsa. And it. so last year we, we really did, even during a pandemic, celebrated our, our 20 years in the business. But they would call me the Rhythm Finder. This is how we got the name. They, they called me the Rhythm Finder. They said, okay, go to Elisa. If she can't find it, if she can't find your rhythm, then you might not have any. And so <laughs> it became... <laughs> I was That's like, so well, funny so, to me, Dad. You can't find a rhythm, huh? You, you can't, can't find, find a rhythm. So I guess they were like, can't. some people might not can. So some I was. Can't. <laughs> so it was. It was. It was. Um, I had to connect and, and intersect my lives because salsa is always. I always say it's like my first child. My beer is like my 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 second child, and you don't want to leave one 
it, without the other. So I, it morphed into, and you know what? Everybody wants rhythm, whether you're brewing beer, whether you're dancing. Yep. We all would, I say this all the time. We just had social and racial injustice. We had a pandemic. And if we, we know right now, we need to find all kind of new rhythms because nothing is probably going to go back to normal. Um, so you're right. the word just, entertainment, sports, you know, find your rhythm in whatever you do. So it's been, it's been fun because I, then I get to talk about my South stuff. But yes, and Jen, when I come there, we remember we discussed with a little sip. We and talked about it. Yes, we did. Sip oh, yes. Salsa. I'm going to get sip and salsa, girl. Gonna I'm going to do get, it at the beer. We are going to do it. It opens and we're going to bring your beer down there, stock it. Well, we're probably got to give it away for free because we won't be through a distributor, but whatever. We'll go cut through we'll the red tape. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll make sure people are drinking. Yes. <laughs> yes. I cannot <laughs> wait to host you here. Listen, so I am, I got so deep into a rabbit hole today looking up the benefits of dance. And I love to dance. My, uh, my mm -hmm. mom and my niece, Autumn, who's on here, used to dance uh, in the basement, oh, all, you know, what? just as, as a way to hang out together. And I dance around my condo every now and then in the morning just to kind of move my body. Yeah, I was reading about the benefits of dance. We know that they're physical benefits, but the mental benefits are astounding. And I don't think I knew all of this. And I just want to read real quickly. Yes. It says that uh, when you scan the brain, it shows that it lights up when people are dancing. Like the synapses start firing. It helps with um your your vision Absolutely. your rhythm your balance it improves yes. your mood and agility it helps reduce Everything. stress it yes it, dancers have higher self-esteem and more confidence and it's a benefit of increased socialization Absolutely. So all these beautiful benefits to something that we could all do in our own way. Just kind of you know in your I mean? own way. And you know what someone always says I say this all the time happy people dance. Mm. You dance music it is therapy. I, I will tell you, movement yep. is so important. And I think a lot of us have gotten, you know, especially in, in the last year, you know, we're home more. And then we really just, you know, we tended, we're, we're sitting down more. You have to get up. You have to yeah. keep those endorphins moving. I literally, my, my, my studio really is my therapy. It balances me completely out. So I always say you have to, you've got to move. You've got to keep the brain and, and the mental. I have students that come in. Yes, they want to learn how to salsa, merengue, bachata, and get all sexy. But it, it's a, it's a mental, it's a therapy thing. Yeah. And so it's important that we, we, we dance, we put on some music, even if it's 10 Absolutely. minutes a day yep. movement and what you just read in that article, that is so important. We need that. I think more than, more than ever in I our agree. lives, we've got to continue to move, keep everything moving. Yep. Yep. How old are your students? What's the age range of your students? So I have my babies that come in. They're they're like they're the cutest. They're like three and a half, four. What? Uh, yes, yes. So I have babies that come in. They're the they're they're um, they're so adorable. Can, can you imagine three and four year olds like dancing salsa? We've got I, I we've got it's so cute. They're so adorable, Jen. They are just the cutest things. We've got to start um, young with with the kids and culture and music and dance is so yeah. important. And then I've got you know people that will come on the dance floor that are in their late seventies, early eighties. Wow. Oh yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful thing to see and it's so diverse and you know, you just have people that are, that dance, they just want to dance. So yeah, I've got all eight then the teenagers that come out that are like, Oh, I'm too cool to, you know, salsa or <laughs> dance. And before you know it, they're like joining our house of salsa dance team. And uh, it's just, it, it's a, it's empowering. It's inspiring for me to watch because mm -hmm. it's like I t I take these babies, the the, the three year olds, but then I take the you know fifty and sixty year old olds that really just want to do something new in life, and yeah. we're creating motion and movement and you know and purpose. So I'm just I'm 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 a blessed girl. I'm doing two things mm -hmm. that I really absolutely love to do. It's fantastic. And, and just going back to the benefits of, of dance, just that mind body kind of connection, that mental body connection that happens when you get to dance, you know, oh. it's just so, um, I don't know how else to describe it, especially if you get into it, you know, you have a song on that you really just groove Ooh. into. It's like sometimes you go into a trance. And you're just like oh, doing your thing. Your thing. And it's then no one is around so, you. Oh, no one's around to no, judge. No one's, 
Yes, I have yes. outer body experiences, Jen. I, I will tell you on the dance floor with salsa because there's some music because it's very spirit. The, the music is very spiritual. Don't forget, like Latin yes. music has a lot of great rhythmic African that roots beat. and beats and Cuban yes. and salsa. And so when you're hearing drums, but then you're on the floor and someone's spinning and turning you, and you're just like, you know, it is the most amazing feeling. And so sometimes I'm not even present. Yes. And, and and I'm there in the dance, but uh, it's just, it's an, it's an amazing experience. Yes, I've had a lot of outer bodies. Um, I love it. You know, yeah, it's amazing. I it. I'm Denise <laughs> says, dance like no one's watching. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's the truth. Denise, it's the absolutely. Truth. Just go into your own groove. And I tell people all the time, I'm like, even if we get on the floor and for the first time you do a two-step or a no-step, you can't find the rhythm, you don't, can't have the beat, it's okay. At yeah. least you're, 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 you're moving and, and you're, you know, you're just moving. Like you said, your segment and series is movement. And this is so important that we move. Yeah. We've got to keep is. moving. It is. Now, translating that into like our everyday life, how do you, what would be your advice for people to find their rhythm um, in their personal lives? So in our day to day, what are some of the things we can do to kind of find a groove in this, but, you know, things are so different now. So what would be yeah. your advice for us? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, wake up knowing that there's a purpose for you to find your rhythm. Mm. It, it, it's, it's, it's deep. Mm. It, it's yep. wake, get up, wake up and just really know that there's go on a, on a, on an inward mm. mission that you can figure out what your rhythm is. If, if yesterday, if something wasn't working in your day yesterday, then change directions, change yeah. mindset. It's so important that I think, especially with the times that we're living in, we have to continue to pivot and shift, um, but find what is your rhythm. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's not everybody else's rhythm, and you've got to move forward with that. I, th I just think, you know, and, and figure out how you can connect and, and change mm -hmm. and, and diversify, not just you, but go on a mission to, to find rhythms for other people. It's so much more rewarding. It really, honestly, it, yeah. it is. It's so, like a dance that we do. Even with we do. your answer, it reminded me of dancing that we do with, with each other to give and yes. take, to give energy, to receive yes. energy, just this, this beautiful yeah. rhythmic waltz or yeah, yeah like or a, whatever you cha cha is. cha. Yeah. Somebody said earlier they said you know one two cha cha cha. I saw that. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it really is about finding your rhythm, your purpose, and it's so important once you identify that. Um, you can change the world. It, it's so powerful. Just takes that one little, one little mind, you know, set. So it's just, you know, it's, and I got to shout out Kim KJ from Connecticut, who is on it. I just, those are people in, in my orbit that are in my rhythm. It's like my rhythm nation. Like everybody that has supported us from day one, they're you and uh, all of the collaborations and the craft women connect you guys are like my rhythm nation. So you keep me yeah. inspired. You keep me empowered. You keep me moving. So it's, let, a, it's a beautiful thing. Let me tell you about this connection. It's so cold. And then we're going to move on. Kim KJ. Mm -hmm. You know that I know Kim KJ, right? So yes, Kim KJ is my niece's mother-in-law. So my <laughs> sister, who is on next, is uh -huh. Autumn's mom, and Autumn is married to Glenn, and Glenn's mom is Kim, who is your homegirl from Connecticut, who got me your beer on one of her trips down here. She got me your red, she made blue, sure. and your black is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Kim, uh, Kim showed up and showed yeah, out. That's and that's why that's that family. is so family. She yep. is a part of the original Rhythm Nation right here, Connecticut it. crew, connected us and made sure that a sister made sure she got her rhythm 
all the way where she needed to go. So I was like, say, I'm like, they're traveling, they're in good hands. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I just, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I can oh, say that five amazing. more times. It right, is amazing. right. Amazing. This just keeps going on into that theme of movement, of like how our lives kind of intertwine and connect and oh, come and back connect. together. Like, yeah, because you know, you can read purposeful. people. It, it really is. And you know, it's funny because when I teach, I can, I know a lot about people that come to, into my studio when, especially because I do a lot of first, I do a lot of choreography for first dances. So, oh yeah. So it's a beautiful thing because I'm a part of like their first dance, like the most special day of their life, one of the most special moments uh, in their lives. And so, but I can tell a lot, a lot about people when they connect through dancing wow. and it's ma it's magical it is so magical um personalities and you know who's the one that will you know compromise who's the one that won't give who so it, it's just um it's just a powerful it's but it is it, life is in in uh intertanglement of it beautiful is. crescendos and dancing i oh, love it me too me too <laughs> Listen, we have four more minutes. This is going by so okay. fast. So you I talked know. about it is. We got to do this again, just me and you. But you talked about magic. And that made me think of your latest release, your latest beer, BGM, Black Girl Magic or Birthday Girl Magic. It's, it's both. Listen, either it, or. Was, it was either, either or. or. I just say Black Girl Magic rolls right off of my tongue. Honestly, it does. actually. Well, you are because, it. So. Yes. Hmm. And be, yes. but because, girl, but because I was celebrating a milestone, I was celebrating uh, 25 again, I figured yes. let's go with the birthday girl magic because literally you don't turn, you know, these, these decades, you know, every year, it's every 10 girl, years. You look great. You should say it. Thank so you. Loud. You look amazing. 50. I yes. love 50. Listen, I have, yes. I will tell you, I'm the first one to say, I would say 50 and it just rolls off like that. I'm like, this mm. is getting really good. I'm like, yeah. life is getting really, really, really good. And if this is what 50 is, bring it, bring it on. I'm not going to say 60 yet, girl. No, we're but not there 50 yet. Is fat. 50, 50 no, we're not there yet. No, 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 no. 50 is so fabulous. Let's not but get listen, ahead of ourselves. No, we're not. But I look at my mom, <laughs> listen, I look at my mama and I'm like, if that's what 70 looks like, I'm good. I'm like, okay. All right. All right. It's just, it's a, it's a great thing. But yeah, the black girl magic, birthday girl magic, it was incredible. It was a special uh, release uh, for my birthday. And uh, I did a vanilla porter and it came out so delicious. And I'm, uh, I gotta, we, we gotta, we, we gotta, we'll, we'll figure all of that out, yeah, but it was, we will. Um, <laughs> it was, deep. it was, it was, you know, it was great. I was able to put, you know, the, the face on the can and just, just go, there you go, world. There you go. 50. That picture, I stole that picture and put it on my latest Instagram post of you because you look like you are like uh -uh. mid twirl, like mid soft I, I, and you look I was so mid fat. Your hair is here and your arms. Oh, this was going, face. it was, I did a spin. <laughs> you did. I could tell. The energy show, it she, came out through the photo. Jen, that oh. was probably one of the best. That, I love, the reason why I love that picture is because if there's days where I'm just like, oh, I'm just worn out. I will look at that picture because it's like, nope, there you go. That's the energy. That's the mm. spirit. And so, um, it t so to be able to put that on a can was, you know, it's just amazing. So I'm really, really, really excited about um, that birthday uh, release. So that was awesome. Where they can get it from. You distribute in Connecticut. And, We're in Connecticut. That, yes. yes. So if you're in Connecticut, you can get it. If not, it's not here in Atlanta yet. Uh, Jackie and Chrissy's asking. Uh, Lisa's beer is not here Jackie in Atlanta yet. Yeah, not soon. distributed here yet, but soon. And when Very it is, soon. it'll be at my shop, the Atlanta Beer Boutique, when I open it up. It absolutely uh, will. And I can't wait for that. I cannot wait. Tell people how to find you on Instagram, um, what you got coming up next, and um, yeah, how people absolutely. can stay connected to you. And Jen, thank you so much for uh, yes. this platform. I love, I love I this. Love this. this. This is amazing. So um, you find us Rhythm Brewing Co. IG, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, 
uh, LinkedIn, our, we can go on our stories. You can reach me directly. I'm very accessible. I run around you and are. go crazy. Yeah, but people know mm -hmm. that if they, you know, they, they send a message out there that, you know, I, I typically get back within like 24 hours. So mm -hmm. just, just follow us. Follow the journey. We always say you can follow us. It's not about our numbers going up. It really is about the people who are going to join us on the journey. And yeah. We're just so excited to, again, we're working on, we're on a mission really to get the brand uh, to other, you know, major cities and locations, Chicago, you know, yep. Atlanta, DC, Maryland. So um, with the support and love of everybody out there, uh, we just keep doing what we're doing. Yep. Yep. We will. My fam, uh, Black and Bruce Chicago says, y'all, they need some rhythm in Chicago. So we're going to work oh, on that. Love them. Yes, we oh, are. Absolutely. We are. Absolutely. Alisa, Absolutely. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to connect with you in person. I feel like I know we're going that to be virtual BFFs big hug immediately. Hugs. Yes. No, right. we are. We're already BFFs. <laughs> we're literally BFFs. Yeah, so, BFFs. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, we are. We are family. So, thank you and keep doing what you're doing. Thank I you. love, love, you love too. your platform and thank you for sharing our stories. This is so, it, it means, you know, the world. Uh, to us in the industry. So absolutely. And I, I'll keep doing it as long as I can. So thank you again. Thank you. Cheers. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And uh, I'll be yes. in touch soon, honey. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Mwah. All right. Y'all hang on because we have an another guest coming next. Elisa, I don't know how to make you go away. Let me see what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> you saw um, me. I'm like low key over here trying know. to literally. I think if you just exit out. Exit in the out. Top, yeah, in the top there. Oh, the got it. Take you away without me doing it. So we're going to transition over. We're going to invite Mickey, um, Mickey Fit, into the group. I'm going to pour the rest of my beer. Um, that was such a great conversation. Mickey Fit, um, if you're there, invite yourself or ask to join the live. That's the best way for me to find you. Elisa, that, uh, so much energy. It was great, wasn't it, Autumn Lee? She is just high power, high energy. Autumn Lee is basically related to her because that's her mother-in-law is Kim. And then that's, they know each other. So you know how we do, we, we cousins. Um, someone said Jen needs another drink. I just pour it more. So Mickey Fit is somewhere around here. Uh, I think she should ask to join the live. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go down here and invite her up. Mickey Fit, send a request. Denise says she loves it and she wants that beer ASAP. Denise, if I get some down here somehow, I will send it to you. There's my sister. She's wiping her face. Say something so I can make sure you're careful. Oh, wow. Oh, well, well. I have my lighting is so bad. I'm sorry. I was trying to move another one. No, that's but... better. Ooh, I'm sweating trying to get this stuff together. Why are you sweating? <laughs> moving around? Because, because I'm moving around trying to get a better location. <laughs> Girl, it's a lot of work. I set this up at 5 o'clock. Well, I didn't. Mm -mm. I should have told yeah, you, child. Listen, y'all. This is my sister, Mickey Fit. And I'm so excited to have her here. So I've never talk to you in this kind of platform it's kind of weird because I hope it doesn't feel too formal I don't think so okay good <laughs> I, don't I, think so. I, I don't think so um that, what, that took it down a lot it really did I, what are you drinking kombucha I, yeah I'm drinking June shine which is a a hard kombucha it is it's so good hey, hey autumn hey sis hey Denise hey Tracy hey Faith She's so good at it. She's the she's the more social one of us. <laughs> <laughs> she is. So listen, we are talking about movement, and I knew I wanted to talk to you during this go round of beer biz and BS. And I didn't know what the things were going to be. I just reached out in my brain, reached back into my brain, and thought of who I wanted to talk to this go around. And these natural connections happen. You yeah. and Elisa for movement, and I was like, uh, of course we're going to talk about movement with Mickey. Um, and for those who don't know, we're going to jump right in. My sister is a double decade Pilates vet. So she's been practicing, studying <laughs> all up in the Pilates <laughs> for 20 plus years. And it started out because you wanted to get fit for your wedding. Um, to my brother in love, who I love, Imari, y'all know him. He's property brother. I post him, child. He, he talked to me last time we were on the show. 
but that's my sister's uh, hubby. And she was getting ready for her wedding and started Pilates and just fell in love. And I think that's such a beautiful story because it has been a constant of your life ever since, just as long as you've been married and as long as you've, you know, you've been doing Pilates. And it's just so beautiful to me. Tell me, like, what drew you to Pilates initially? Because it's a really, it's a very unique exercise. Some people think it's yoga, but it ain't. So right, first of right. all, what drew you specifically to Pilates? Well, Pilates. So, Pilates. So this, this is how this is how old I am. So <laughs> Denise Denise Austin. Yes. Was, right. So I was watching her DVDs like in the late eighties, early nineties. Girl, those were VHSs. Don't play. They want no I'm DVD. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> they were VHSs. I was watching these beta tapes. <laughs> beta tapes. <laughs> so I was watching these. You're right. I was watching VHS tapes of Denise Austin, and she was doing Pilates. And I was like, ah, what's this? And I mean, I was really intrigued by it because I hadn't seen it before. And mm -hmm. then I started doing a little research at the library, right? Back in the day, <laughs> no, no, no internet. So no I went internet. To the no, no interweb. Went, went to the library. Wow. wow. No internet. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> went to the library and was looking at books, not VHS tapes, and there was a lady named Mari Windsor who wrote a book about Pilates, and I was able to rent her VHS tapes from... Do them with you. From Scott Candler Library. From the library. On Candler Road. And so I just fell in love with the practice, fell in love with the practice, and was doing it, you know, in mom and dad's basement, and then when I moved out on Ralph McGill, I was doing it, you know, in my apartment. And yeah, that's how I fell in love with it. Just watching some VHS tapes, and I love the, you know, I just love the practice. So. Autumn called us so, old heads. I see, I see those little you old lady that? faces. I need some, put my readers on so I can really I got, see that. I got my readers right here, my people, so they match the shirt. So I can see these comments, because people oh talking smack about us. That's why it's crazy. Trail the road, shoddy. Trail the road, shoddy. Let me put them on. Okay, it's past my cup says, yo. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so Pilates has been a part of your life for 20 years. It was founded by Joseph Pilates. Tell us a little quick backstory on kind of how it even came to be as a practice. Because people, like I said, they think it's yoga, but yoga is centuries old. But Pilates is a newer practice. A absolutely newer. So Joseph Pilates is a white dude that really made up a fitness program. To really, Boom. you know, be real basic. Boom. Um, he was injured in the war, mm -hmm. and he, him, and a few of his um, fellow soldiers, and he was bedridden, and he created these movements in order to help them convalesce and to get stronger faster. So that's crazy. I know, it's crazy, right? So just like in traction, if you ever seen someone in traction where they have the um the little bar up, the bar up yeah and the the, the like I guess kind of like a canopy ish bed mm -hmm. that was what some of the soldiers were in because you know they had lost limbs or had broken limbs from bombings and things like that. Wow. So yeah so he created an exercise that you can do in the bed with limited mobility. And that's where the reformer and Cadillac was invented with him in a hospital bed basically making up moves. And he was also a boxer. So he was, you know, he, he was into physical fitness. Um, he has no formal education, though, other than being, you know, we think he graduated from high school. Nobody really knows. Wow. But he, he has no formal education, you know, medically or, you know, no physical, you know, physical therapy, anything like that. But he created an entire set of exercises in order to help people go to less and in a more fit way. Hey, so Michelle okay. Arrington says so she can do Pilates in her bed. Why ain't never said that? I, I did. I just posted it the other day. She must have missed <laughs> you it. did. I saw it. Per I saw you perhaps doing she was pajamas perhaps she was on an island. Yes, yeah, she may be on the she island. Was probably then, so. island hopping yeah. at that time. Unavailable. <laughs> I don't have Wi-Fi in wherever I am. <laughs> Dubadaba Island. Um, 
fascinating backstory on Pilates. Yes, absolutely. Um, I was reading an article in Bazaar, because that's what I'd be doing, reading articles, about the key differences between yoga and Pilates. But I, I saw this one particular passage that talks specifically about Pilates and the benefits of it. And I want to read it out, and we'll talk about it on the other side. So it sure. says, as Pilates is a slower-paced discipline that also focuses on breath work, it can be extremely meditative and stress-relieving. Pilates joins the body with the mind. It requires good concentration of your body and breath with the deep focus needed for advanced level Pilates, all of which can help to boost your mental health. So I was talking with Elisa before, before you about salsa and dancing about and how that can help to, of course, there are physical benefits that we know about, but can also help to boost your mental health and your awareness. And I think it's so fascinating that just through these small movements, if you've ever done Pilates, you know, they're very small, concentrated, focused movements. They're not those big, dramatic, you know, hit intensity, clean and jerk stuff you do in CrossFit. Uh, They're very small and concentrated. And I've seen people who are hit junkies and who are bodybuilders and who are really into circuit training who can't do Pilates well because it requires smaller movements. It doesn't use momentum and makes you focus in on very specific muscle movements. But the connection to your mind and how that helps to boost your mental health, I just think that's so awesome. Like, can you talk more about sort of that connection that is made through when we move, how it connects our whole selves? Well, I'll, 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 I'll loosely quote Joseph Pilates. And he says that breath is like the first, you know, requisite of life, basically. Mm. And so if you're not connecting your breath to your movement, then it, I mean, you're, you're going to be disconnected. Mm. And some of, some of the things that you said in the article about, you know, being precise and focused and controlled, those are some of the principles of Pilates that Joseph yeah. Pilates yeah. You know, uses. And it is a definitely a mind-body connection practice. And people often ask, how are you doing Pilates 20 years later and you're still doing the moves and still getting a benefit? And that's a really good question because I, if you lift five pounds for 20 years, you're really, you know, are you getting a benefit? Hmm. If you're doing the same classic 34 moves, which there are 34 classical moves in the Pilates repertoire, how are yeah. you yeah. still challenging yourself? Well, the answer to that is if you are really connected and you are focused, each time you go to the class, you're going to have a different result. Yeah. So if I, if I started in Pilates over 20 years ago and I was doing a move, let's say I'm doing the open leg rocker, and every time I improve, I'm challenging myself more the next time. So that's how you're able to get strong. But the mind-body connection is so key in that because if you're yeah. not connected yeah. mentally, then you're not going to even focus on each time you're going into class yep. and make an, an intentional movement. So the that's focus, the, the focus and the confidence too, that, that you confidence. need to kind of tell yourself and coach yourself through, through sessions. Michelle Arrington asked a really good question. She says she enjoys Pilates more than yoga. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they, they seem similar, but what are the differences between the two? Just some quick differences between yeah. Pilates and yoga. So I, I, I normally, you know, I have like a little uh, elevator um, speech about this because people always ask this. <laughs> so I would say the, the two basic differences are that in Pilates, the movements are designed to fluidly go from move to move. Mm-hmm. And you're, for, so when you go from, you know, the first move, it's supposed to fluidly go to the next move, et cetera. And we're not holding a pose as you would in a yoga class. So if you're going right. into a yoga class, you're holding the tree, you're holding a warrior. In Pilates, you're moving through one move, and then you should move to the next move. So it's mm-hmm. a very fluid class. It's not a, it is. It's not, it's not a, it's it's, not a static class. No, so it's a lot more easy. dynamic, isn't it? Just, dynamic just, and yeah. definitely more fluid. So that's, that's how I would say, you know, because people always say, well, it works for the core. But what, what does that mean? People don't even know what that really is. So I would say the biggest difference is that it's fluid and the moves are designed to be connected and to have a very smooth transition from move to move. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's not a exercise where you're doing, you know, multiple sets and multiple reps. And even though I, I will post it on Instagram because people want that. Like, people are always asking, so how many reps? How many sets? Mm -hmm. in, in a true Pilates class, you don't do multiple sets. You do reps. You would do, you know, five of this six of this and move on to exercise but you're not going to do a circuit per se mm -hmm. so that's just a little bit you know of the difference between well I kind of went to a whole nother level no it's good because as you said this is good because as you said earlier there's a specific sequence of moves yeah. in yeah. traditional Pilates <laughs> there's like yeah. a one through 34 and you do them yeah. in an order for a specific reason it's it's a it's a true it's almost like a choreography Absolutely. in this in this exercise so it should be fluid whereas you may start and stop in yoga Absolutely. um vicky wants to know can you lose weight doing pilates yes you, i mean you can lose weight doing any movement yeah right? okay cool you can lose weight oh. w walking by this you, right this you movement. Lose, yeah this you can movement. lose weight doing pilates five six <laughs> seven eight and one okay now you're not going to lose weight you know, in a, you know, quickly doing Pilates, just like you're not going to lose weight, you know, quickly if you're walking because the intensity. Now, it depends on a couple of things. One is your level of intensity, just like with anything else. If you're walking heels and a walk, then you're going to, you know, lose weight faster because you're going to burn more calories. With True. Pilates, the same thing. If you increase the intensity in Pilates, and it can be because you are adding a prop to, the, you know, to mm -hmm. your practice, it can be that you're becoming more efficient mm -hmm. in your practice, which will make your practice more intense. So, yes, you can lose weight doing Pilates, but Pilates is not a cardio exercise. And, right. Right. And it, it, it is a strength training exercise, but I would not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a weight loss exercise. Well, because give us I, a go ahead. I'm sorry because you were. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to ask you to give us like a typical week workout that includes yeah. Pilates, so we can know the balance between cardio and strength training kind of things. <laughs> yes. So this is what it I does make you fine. Pilates do right. make you fine. Pilates right. do. Pilates do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in addition to Pilates, this is the probably the third most popular question I get. What do you do? Yeah. So in addition to Pilates, I walk slash walk run. Mm -hmm. I lift weights. I do Pilates, and I do some you know yoga or you know some kind of hit, hit training. So okay, not and not every week I do all those things, but in order to really burn more calories and build more muscle, which will in turn make you lose weight, you you would really have to add some other things in with Pilates as far as I'm concerned. And a lot mm -hmm. of Pilates instructors won't, won't say that. Now, and I'm not saying you can't lose weight because anytime you start a new movement, if you haven't done anything before, then you will start, you will lose weight. But you will plateau just like if you, you know, start walking and you walk yeah. 30 minutes yeah. a day, you know, for the first couple of weeks, you will lose weight. But after mm -hmm. that, you know, third or fourth week, you're going to have to add some intensity in order mm -hmm. to lose weight. Now I'm, you know, I'm over 50, so I have to add some kind of strength training to build muscle in order to continue to lose weight. And say that again. I'm over 50. They don't believe you. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> over 50, y'all. She's fine. <laughs> 50 plus. 50 plus. Yes, I'm over 50. And anyone that is over 35, let's get real. Get any, real any woman. And that's who I'm most concerned about because men don't normally have many challenges losing weight. Any woman over 35 should be doing some kind of strength training. It could mm -hmm. be body weight training. It could be, you know, push-ups. It can be squats without weight. It can be, you know, lunges. It can be yeah. yoga. It can be Pilates. It can okay. be resistance training. It can be weight. But you have to add some kind of resistance training to your workout. If How you many days not, a week? Minimum two. Two days a week, at least two days at a week, least. I should be doing like a Pilates yoga or a Pilates yeah. and some kind uh, of. A, a Pilates and weights. Because Pilates, Pilates yoga and. Is, oh, they're too similar. They're too similar. Yeah. You're, you're, we're not going to get those results. Anymore. Okay. I mean, okay, so I should do. 
Pilates and then like you said, like a, a, a strength training session, yeah. which means it like weights, curls, right? squats, yeah. Yeah. Hit, resistance I, 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 bands. Yeah, that's right. Plyometrics, metrics, a hit workout. Because that's right, Tracy is Mickey Fit. Tracy has yes. so, <laughs> so what I what I always tell people is that if you want to make a real change in your body, you have to make a real change in your workout from the mm -hmm. time when you were, you know, 25, 35, whatever the case may be. And it's just, it's not realistic to, you know, to do mat Pilates every day at my age and still be toned because that's not all I need to do. You got to do a little more. Do a little more. Yep. My girl, Black and Brew Chicago, whose name is also Mickey, but M I C K E Y. Hey. I know, What's right? Up? Oh, Mickey, you're so fine. Yeah, remember that? She asked. Do I? Does I played it today. Us? You did. Oh, today. <laughs> she asked, does ankle weights, does using ankle weights while you walk work? I have seen, so my sister, she's a social media Pilates influencer, in case you don't know that. Go to at Mickey Fit. And just check her out. She has like 126, as of today, thousand followers. And she does videos with all kinds of props, which I think is so much more fun. It kind of amps up and diversifies your workout. I've seen you use ankle weights before. Yes. Do you think so, they are a good addition to your sort of regular, if you're just walking, like you said, we have to sort of ramp up as we go and kind of continually challenge ourselves. So if you're normally walking every day, how can adding something simple like ankle weights really kind of boost your workout results? Okay, so I, I think ankle weights are more effective if you're doing something like a Pilates move, like a okay. Pilates practice than they are for walking. I'm going to tell you why. So if you have ankle weights on, right? Let's say mm -hmm. they're two, two pounds each, right? Let's just say that. So you've added four pounds to your body weight. Mm -hmm. So the more you weigh, the more calories you burn, right? True. But you only added four more pounds to your That's body. Not a lot. Not, not a lot. lot. So that, I mean, you're not going to add, you know, 10 pounds each to your ankle. No, you know, not that little ankle. Child. No, little you know, little so yeah. I'm not saying that they're not going to do anything, but for walking, it's not going to make a significant calorie burn increase. Okay. Now, what okay. they will do is add resistance to Pilates moves or mm. um, body weight training moves. So if it's good doing, for your those two strength training sessions that you say we should do at minimum yes. per week, maybe yes. add the ankle weights to something like that to yes. challenge ourselves a little more. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Like if you're doing, you know, if you're just, you know, old school, you know, like donkey kicks, you know, you know, add an ankle I weight. I love those. Me too. I still do them. <laughs> um, yeah. So things like that. But well, I'm not saying they're not effective for walking, but you're not really adding enough weight to for them to make you burn more calories. I'm assuming that yeah, that's what people want to do with them because it's not if going I'm to, adding the weight, it better do it better burn some calories. Right, right, okay. Absolutely. Because yeah. it's not going to tone your legs more having the ankle weight on. Right. It's not that okay. Got you. Yeah. That's good great advice. Thank you. Yep. That's um, right, sis. Great Kim's advice. KJ, thank you, sis. sis says it's great advice. Thanks, sis. Um I was talking about your social media following just a second ago and mm -hmm. um I wanted to talk about sort of the other, the other way I thought about movement. So I was thinking about movement in sort of the physical sense, but I was also thinking about movement in like an upward mobility professional trajectory, right? Okay. So you're, you start out as a Pilates instructor. You moved on to have, to do sort of one-on-one -on -one sessions and to begin this online studio. You've created sort of your own two brands of Pilates, of, of Pilates, uh, Pilates Fit, which is for like uh, sort of the high performance athletes, and then Chair Fit, which is for people with mobility issues or limited mobility. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to, in these last sort of five minutes that we have, five wow. or six minutes, shift and talk about sort of movement in our careers and movement wow. in our professional lives. Um, Love it. I've personally seen you move just throughout your your journey. It's just been so beautiful to see. So wow. if if you could talk about like do you have any advice for people who want to make like bigger career moves and, and maybe we don't know where to start or how to 
how to do it? What are some simple first steps we can take just to move into what the world or what our our existence has for us personally in our professional lives? Well, I would say like, you know, put your foot in it, like stick your toe in yeah. it, like yeah. start. Mom gave me one of the best pieces of advice when I decided to stay home. She said, yeah. always, she said, always work in some capacity. Wow. No, no matter what it is. I mean, if it's, you know, one hour at the Y, if it's, you know, every other month, you know, um, at market, if it's, you know, working with Tracy Nicole, always stay within the workforce because wow. it's going to be a very hard reentry mm-hmm. once you, you know, and, and, and this goes for people, not just for people with children or stay at home moms, it goes for anyone. So if you're interested in an in industry, put your foot in it and keep your foot in it. Don't, wow. you know, even if it's a very small capacity and that's how you can stay connected because you don't want to be so far removed mm-hmm. when you're really ready to launch something because that's what happened to people in the pandemic. It did. They were so it far did. removed that they, they had, they were scrambling to launch something. And so you have to always keep, you know, your foot in what you're interested in. That's, that's yeah. my piece of advice. I mean, I'm not sure if that's really. The- People are, re- that's resonating with folks. Uh-huh. Folks are given uh-huh. the, the strong arm and moms that beer says 100. She agrees <laughs> with you on that. Yeah. I love that Instagram name, but that's, that's so awesome because it, it really makes you remember that like we have to own the fact that we have multiple purposes here. Yeah, absolutely. our time here is meant to be spent doing things that we love. And that doesn't mean just one thing. Right. And if it's, it can be family, it can be fitness, it can be food, it can be coffee. It can be all those things at once. It can be helping Mm -hmm. your sister at her events, whatever your thing is, volunteering, you know, that we have to stay connected in those things that we love and not get too far removed so that when it's time to re-enter or to grow, whatever that means for you and whatever time it is, it's an easy transition to make. That's awesome. I love that. I love that. And I love that like moms give different advice to different people. Yeah, different, different people. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. awesome. We we know, have discovered right? that before that the yes. things that mom might have told yes. you were not the same things that she told me. At all. Yeah. 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 Because we were different and we needed different things Absolutely. from her. Yeah. It's so awesome. I have a few more questions. We only have three sure. more minutes. Yeah, um, yeah. Wait, wait a minute. First of all, will you help me pick the Duchess Cosmetics giveaway winner. So oh, sure. Duchess is, if y'all don't know, she's a black owned, I love her because she's like a lot of us. She has a corporate job, a regular nine to five, but she loves cosmetics. You love Pilates, I love beer. And yeah. she has started her own company, her own cosmetics line in her spare time as if yeah, she that, has it, but she's done ridiculous. it. It's at Duchess Cosmetics. And every week we've been giving away lipstick um, to people who've been participating in the giveaway. So I want you to help me pick the winner. Okay. I want you to pick a number between 1 and 15. Okay, 3. Oh, it's Sandy Cap. Sandy Cap 1. My Virgo sister. We're vibing. Oh, Virgo vibe. (laughs) Earth sign. Earth sign vibe. So we're going to send her a tube of the gin. I don't have it on this week, but it's that bright coral oh, color that. that's so beautiful yes. it's gonna look so good on her, her. we're yeah. gonna get that to you sandy cap i will get your mailing address duchess will send it to you directly i love duchess's um products i'm wearing fire starter this is my boss color whenever i used yeah, to go on like sister circle it. when rashawn uh had oh, a show yeah. rashawn's show it was Rashawn's other people show. on that show but our mom always right. called it rashawn's yo <laughs> um, I would wear this color and go. And I should say that you and Elisa are both getting gift cards, complimentary of me oh, and Duchess, because I just appreciate you being here and giving your knowledge and sharing you. your passion with this movement to the people. If you have one more minute left, <laughs> time flies so fast when you're having fun. Let's perfect. tell folks how to find you, what you have coming up next, and sure. how folks can kind of stay connected to Mickey Fit. So, Mickey Fit. Which is M I C K I P H I T, and it's that's my name everywhere. So on yeah. Twitter, which I'm really not very active, Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, that's how you can find me. What I'm doing next, um, I am 
working on launching one of my programs. It kind of got back burner because I have another big project that I'm working on that will be, um, I, I'll let you guys know about soon. So that, those are the two things, working on getting my fitness program um, on an online platform. And also, uh, I'm also working on another, um, I'm working on CareFit along with Pilates Fit. You mentioned both of those. So just yeah. working on a, a mobile certification for both of those programs. So folks who are fitness instructors can get certified in Pilates Fit and Chair Fit as yeah, a but there's that's no awesome. prior Pilates experience needed for either of those certifications. So that's yeah. really good. And you have an app that you launched a few months ago. So people who are wishing to find dynamic moves to kind of fit into yes. their their workout, tell them in quick yes. so, about um, the app. You could, so my, I have two products. I have an online studio, which is mostly Pilates, and my app is more um, high-intensity training, weight training, circuit training, and I have um, four-week-long fitness programs. So they're two separate products because they're you know, for two separate needs. Uh, you can just uh, click the link in my bio, and <laughs> it'll, take you, <laughs> it'll take you to my app. It'll say, make, make it your app, make it your online studio, blah, blah, blah. So... That's awesome. the quickest way to find me. Please DM me any questions. If I, if I, you know, did, if you had a question that we did not answer, I do answer my DMs. I did not have an assistant unless I'm going to Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an assistant, so I answer all of them, you know, all of them. So if you have a question, please feel free to DM me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. It's thank 801, you. so it's really time to go. Someone asked, when do you sleep? Uh, hey, Karen. Whenever. That's Karen. That's, That's my girl from oh. South, Southwest and Howard. Yes, hey, oh. Karen. Oh, hey. She wants to know when you <laughs> sleep at some point. At yeah, some at some point. point. She fits it point. in. Yeah. 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 Thank you for joining me, Mickey. Thank Thanks to so all much. of y'all for joining me. I hope you'll be back next week for the third uh, installment. There's only four because there's only four weeks in March. I'm doing this only for Women's History Month. Next week, the topic is passion. And I'll be talking to my friend Tracy Nicole, Ooh. who is uh, – the owner of Trace Nicole Clothing. I've known her for 30 years. And Stacia, who is the owner of the Lost Druids. So it's a brewery in Avondale Estate. So oh, hope yeah. y'all will be back next week. Um, Mickey, thank you so much. Elisa, thank you so much for joining me earlier. And all of you who are there in the audience, thank you so much for being here and hanging I out with us you. on love this you. live. We love, love you guys that. so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye, you so much. I love you, sister. Love you today. Bye. Bye.